Learning about rational exponents is essential because they offer a concise way to express both roots and powers. They simplify complex calculations, making it easier to solve equations and work with various mathematical problems. Before we really get rolling, let's review our perfect square roots, perfect cube roots, and perfect fourth roots. With square roots, we're just wondering which number multiplied by itself equals the number inside the radical. So 5 times 5 is 25, so the square root of 25 equals 5. And cube roots, or third roots, are just asking us what number multiplied by itself three times equals the number inside the radical. So 4 times 4 times 4 equals 64. So the third root of 64 equals 4. And 6 times 6 times 6 equals 216. So the third root of 216 equals 6. Similarly, the fourth root is asking us what number multiplied by itself four times equals the number inside the radical. Well, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 equals 81, so the fourth root of 81 equals 3. It turns out there's another way to write radical expressions, and that's using rational exponents, or exponents that look like fractions. So the nth root of x can be written as x to the 1 over n power. So notice that the root is in the denominator of a fraction. So this is called a rational exponent because it looks like a fraction. We can rewrite the square root of 7 as 7 to the 1 half power. Now with, with square roots, they're a little bit different from other roots because they don't have a number ab above the radical. But we understand there's a 2 there if there's no number above the radical. Here we have the sixth root of 11b. So we'll put our 11b in parentheses and raise it to the 1 6th power. And here we have 2c raised to the 1 4th power. Going the other way, 19 to the 1 3rd power can be written as the third root of 19. Notice that 3 is in the denominator. And here the 1 half power plus the second root, which we also call the square root. So we just put 23xy inside our square root symbol. Notice we don't need to put the 2 there. And 7m to the 1 -fifth power. That equals the fifth root of 7m. Now when we have an exponent inside the radical, we can incorporate that in the rational exponent also. So the nth root of x to the a power is the same as x to the a over n power. So notice that root number is still in the denominator. And now the exponent is in the numerator instead of a 1. So the square root of 7 to the third power, well, this is really the second root because we don't see the number there. So this is 7 to the 3 halves power. It's the square root or second root, and it's raised to the third power. So here are the fifth root and the seventh power. So we have 5cn raised to the 7 fifths power, where we have the exponent in the numerator and the root in the denominator. So we're rewriting these radicals with rational exponents. Okay, when we simplify the ninth root of 7xn to the third power, we get 7xn raised to the 3 ninths power. We have the root in the denominator, 
the power and the exponent. And we can actually simplify that rational exponent. So we have 7xn raised to the 1 3rd power, because these are both divisible by 3. And going the other way, let's see, the denominator is the root, and the numerator is the exponent. So 5 to the 2 7 power is the 7th root of 5 squared. 11n to the 5 halves power is the square root of 11n raised to the 5th power. xy raised to the 3 fourths power, that'll be the 4th root of xy to the 3rd power. Okay, let's now evaluate expressions with rational exponents. So we're going to, going to work out an answer here. So you have 16 to the 1 fourth power. You may prefer to rewrite these with radicals. This means we want the fourth root of 16. So we're wondering what number multiplied by itself four times equals 16. And that'd be 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 16. We have 128 to the 1 7th power. Which is the same as the 7th root of 128, or what number multiplied by itself 7 times equals 128, and that would be 2 once again. And 8 to the 1 3rd power. Oh, we're wondering what the 3rd root of 8 equals. 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8, so the third root of 8 equals 2. Kind of had a theme going in this page here. Now these are different from the ones on the previous screen because our fractions in our rational exponents have numbers other than 1 in the numerator. So 216 to the 2 thirds power, let's go ahead and rewrite that as a radical. So we have the third root of 216 squared. Now when you have an exponent inside the radical, you can actually also put it outside the radical. So this is the same as the th third root of 216. We find that, and then we square whatever we get for that third root. The third root of 216 equals 6, because 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. So let's see, the third root of 216, but then we need to square it. and get 36. So 216 raised to the 2 thirds power equals 36. And we got that by moving that exponent that was inside the radical outside the radical and did that second. We could have done it the other way, but we would have ended up with much larger numbers. 4 to the 5 halves power. Well, that's going to be the square root of 4 raised to the 5th power. Let's go ahead and move that exponent outside of the radical. So we want the square root of 4 raised to the fifth power, which is square root of 4 equals 2. So now we have 2 to the fifth power, which equals 32. So 4 to the 5 halves power equals 32. And finally, 125 to the 2 thirds power. So in this one, we want to find the third root of 125. And then we're going to square it. The third root of 125 equals 5. It's 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. But we don't want to forget that other exponent. So 125 to the 2 thirds power equals 25. I hope these examples about radicals and rational exponents have been helpful. This is Mr. Ela, signing off.